Hello and welcome to Off the Court with myself, Caroline Barker, and Tamsin Greenway. We are here in Hertfordshire after Saracens Mavericks recorded their first win of the season. Tamsin, we've got a defensive special, so keep your thoughts coming. If you're watching us live on YouTube, you can always throughout the week use the hashtag Off the Court. Tamsin Greenway, I mean, defense is your middle name. It wasn't, I mean, that was just her shooting skills. I don't mean it. But what did we see defensively from both these teams? Yes, Mavericks coming out on top, but, but both sides defensively so strong. Yeah, absolutely. We saw two completely different styles. Worth noting that the starting goalkeepers and goal defenders for both sides are all internationals, all from all over the world, but all internationals, ex or current. So that was pretty impressive. And I think noting third quarter, um, Rhino's only keeping Mavericks to nine goals and down the other end of the fourth quarter, the other way around, um, Mavericks keeping Rhino's to eight goals. You could just see the pressure that was coming on. But what I like most is the structure from both sides. So you had this real box defense from Saracens Mavericks. They were keeping that Rhino's attacking end wide. They were challenging on stuff. 17 games between all of them. So Vicky Osola pretty much did it on her own last week, not this week. She had 17 games between that whole defensive unit of goalkeeper, goal defense, wing defense. Down the other end for Rhino's, it was that real tight on pressure the challenging, the contesting, the overrunning on some, the big arms over. That put massive pressure on the Mavs attack ends at certain periods of the game. If you are watching us live, use the hashtag off the court, put your comments in YouTube. We'll get some of your defensive masterclass questions in a bit. But shall we bring some quality? I'm not saying you're not. You could take all of them. Let's bring some quality in. Representing Saracens Mavericks, it's Vicky Odessoda and Zoe Davis as well for Leeds Rhinos. There are. That's what netball's about. I mean, it's not. I want the beef that's going to come in in a minute. And I'm also going to ask you, is netball the biggest sport for sharing sweat? I mean, these two on court. That's the level of questions you're going to get on off the court. Vicky, do you want to assess both of your games? What was it like for you? Um, yeah, it was really exciting to come up against, obviously, my previous club um, and our first home game. So that was big for us. It's glad to come away with the win. And uh, Vinus contested us really well. Um, I think there were definitely um, shifts of momentum throughout the game with who kind of had control and just how we able to come away with it at the end. Zoe, you've had what a game and a bit now tasting the Netball Super League. What's it been like for you? Um, it's actually very similar to SSN, I must admit. Like the ball speed and everything's there and I reckon the physicality may even be a little bit more in this league I reckon. So no, it's pretty similar. Tamsin, tell me how impressed you've been with these two. Yeah, look, they've been brilliant, both in opening weekend and coming into this game. I actually want to pick up on the physicality. I'm going straight in there with defence questions. Talk to me about the penalties, because it, it turned out 55 to, to Rhino today, 39 to Mavs. And there was a real shift in different quarters with different umpires. And I just, I'll come to you first, sorry, just about that physicality, because you guys had the higher penalty count. It, is it something you guys are wary of? Is it something, because the style you're playing is to challenge on ball. So is that something you have to rein in or is it something you just let loose to do? Yeah, no, I think after the first round, um, the biggest thing we noticed was we were too kind and we noticed that our shooters weren't getting the same treatment that we usually give them at training. So I think we wanted to try and set the tone with the umpires saying we're here to play to see, because you've got to set the tone. Otherwise, if you're not going in hard at the start, then the umpires, aren't going, as soon as you go in hard, they're not going to expect it. So it's about in that first quarter, like setting your tone. How do you want to be seen? What do you want to get away with? You have to present what you want. And that's how you've got to start the game. That's the only way the umpires are going to then read the play and know, OK, this is what they're putting out. Vicky, I want to pick up on that then because you play a different style, right? So you're more off the body and will come through for insteps, but you get that wrong and it's a big clatter. So what do you have to think about doing that and what are the coaches sort of encouraging you to do to make sure you're still seen? Oh, yes, I definitely think it's timing and angles coming through the ball. Um, I was saying I tend to play more off the body, so when I'm coming through for the ball, I need to make sure that I'm attacking the line of the ball and not the body because if I do come through, it's going to be a heavy contact and that's something I don't want. And the attackers don't want that either. Um, so, yeah, and I think it's also adjusting to the umpires. Um, some umpires umpire differently, so you have to kind of recognise what they're picking up on and um, to kind of adjust the angle, adjust the body accordingly. Yeah, we don't like that, do we? No. <laughs> if you're watching this right now, loads of questions coming in. Thanks to everyone that's been in touch so far. Ruth wants to know, what are the advantages of setting up your defence so your, your goalkeeper goes out for intercepts as opposed to your goal defence? Um, I think it depends just on how the attackers are playing with the ball. So um, if we've got goal attack or goal shooters exiting, playing quite high, um, goal defenders might sit around it more. Whereas if the ball's in down quickly, we might want goalkeeper challenging to set up the ball to put the goal defence to fly in. So it's kind of uh, one of them is maybe uh, intercept that's 
driving onto and one of it's setting up for your other defenders, so it's depending how you're working together or not. What do you prefer? Um, I'm definitely, I love a fly, especially when I'm in the ring. But the it's glory. <laughs> um, but it's whenever the second phase is so quick, we need the surprise attack from the keeper because it also makes a lot more players look open, so then you've got the wing defence and goal defence just flooding down. So it can act as a bit of a surprise attack if you set it up that way. It's more of a strategic play. You either take the space or you play hard man. Well, for me, it's all about that structure, isn't it? And, and Just you, someone win the ball. Well, well this is the thing. It's not fluke. When you see players come out, I think there was a massive take from Jeeva Mentor in that third quarter, and she hadn't actually intercepted a lot of ball. But if you want to go back and rewatch it, she came out for a fly. But it was so structured out in front. Players had got round in front. There was literally only one option, and I think that's key. And it's not just about what these guys want. It's what they can do. So, you know, you can't just expect someone to come out and start flying for ball or setting up a zone if you haven't got players that can do that. Lots of people talking about the, the new rules. This one from Netball Cricket Mum says defensive strategies for that short pass. Goes on to say still seems impossible not to get pulled as a defender trying to get the ball even with the latest rule change. Um, I think with that, as a defender, you don't want to get involved. If you think it's going to be a short pass, either way it's better to just sit on the back and either force them to play a close ball and set up for the next stage of defence or try and encourage it to a short pass, but we're still figuring that out ourselves, how umpires are going to umpire that. So for me, I'm just going to not contest anything that's that close in the first place. And it comes back to what you're saying about just talking to the umpires, knowing how they're, they're going to go. Yeah, exactly. The short pass is all on an umpire's gauge. So that's where you have to see what the umpire's calling, what they're going to allow. The biggest thing in the short pass is the wing attack, goal attack, goal shooter, whoever it is, they need to make the space look open. And if they don't, then you can just squeeze through. But as a defender, like like Vicky said, you've got to really step on that back because as soon as you try and squeeze, they're going to call you obstruction because you're too close to the ball handler. Can I just say as well, then you can add in a few amateur dramatics and I'm going to call Jeeva up for this one because there was a massive one in the second it quarter. Go? It was oh, like, oh, I was like, Jeeva, mental, are you kidding me? But she liked that in Australia, clearly, yeah. but anyway. Learning from the best, um, <laughs> clearly. Uh, loads of questions about Jazz Brown. I know you've sort of seen her up close and personal. Uh, future Roses goalkeeper, if so, how quickly would you get her in the squad? Well, I, I'm going to pick up on this one. I won't put the pressure on you two. But look, I, I said in an earlier... Uh, you're happy now, aren't you? I said in an earlier um, podcast that actually um, England have tried 32 players, right? They've tried 32 players in the last 18 months. Why would you not throw Jazz Brown into the mix? And look, I, I think Raz Quashi is coming back to her finest form. Look how good she was today. Four games in there against Joyce Mpula. But we've got to have other options. And what's interesting about Jazz is she's big. She's big. And when you talk about hunting, she is out there flying early, looking for things. However, that is the structure that Joe Tripp set up as well. So it's not always just about how good they're playing for their club. It's what they can do internationally. But trust, trust me, she'd be on my list to come and have a look. Keep the comments coming. Vicky Oda Solo, but looking at you and England as well, I won't talk about what's, what's been, but with this unit around you now, you must be thinking about stepping out on court internationally, what this can prove and do. Oh, yeah, it's definitely very exciting to be partnering with Raz Kwashi uh, with her Rose experience, so I think it's beneficial to build that connection and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Talking of connections, I was chatting to Liana Leota this week and we talked a lot about, oh, Jeeva Mentor coming over with you, the Collingwood Magpies, but it works slightly differently, doesn't it, in terms of training partners and the exposure you get to the, the rest of the squad, the time you get with them. Yeah, definitely. So my first year when COVID here, I was pretty lucky. We had a few out and a lot of games, which meant I did get a lot more time with G. Um, come second year as a training partner, you only get what you get in training. It's not... 24-7, um, it's not every single day, like you only get to come in two, three times a week and you've just got to make the most of it. So that's where if anyone does get a chance at any time, like you make the most of any chance, whether it's on the court, whether it's in training, anything, and that's how the connection will grow. So Seems that different here then, because you very much, the training partners are very much part of the squad. Yeah, definitely, and I think unfortunately there's always injuries and things like that that crop up, so Training partners being having those connections in training and being ready to step onto court and in with this partnership at any moment is really important. And defensively, Tamsin, as, as a coach, the defensive end, getting those combinations right early when you have a relatively short season, if you're going to make that top four so key. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you talk about those connections and the time frames. You know, we've been so lucky at Mavs that we've had so many international players and it's great for them. But actually, you spend very little time with them on the training court. So... Um, yeah, bringing in the right personnel as well. It's quite funny that Vicky was all very nice about her and Raz there. Like, we spoke to Raz in the off-season and went, who do you want to play with? She gave us a very short list and she was on it. You know, that was, that was a call to make. And 
And it's massive because you want those partnerships to build. I'm sure the same when you look with Jeeva Mental behind you, you're like, yeah, happy days. Like, it feels good, right? Yeah, no, definitely. And like, because you just know that she's got your back. She's a player that's very selfless and she wants to set things up for you. So when she's, because she's so bloody tall, <laughs> she when she's tall. behind you, like, you get the rebounds, you're up. You've got it, you've got it. <laughs> We're seeing an increase in height. I mean, I haven't statistically looked at it, Tamsin. I'm sure you know. But through court, actually, that increase in height this season, the Netball Super League, I suddenly start to feel short. Yeah, I've said I just got older and shorter. That's why I had to retire. But actually, interesting here, I'm usually swamped, aren't I, when we do pre uh, post match interviews? These two aren't that big, and it's really key to. Well, no, I mean that in the nicest way. But, but you're not right. So there's other parts of the game, and I think it's really important. It's one of the questions we've had from a lot of viewers is like, how do you play on a taller goal shooter? Because, you know, you've got your Mary Chollocks in this league, and Madaka's big in that circle as well. So how you do that, it's not just about your height. It's your footwork. It's your plyometrics. It's all the added training. Like, how important is that, Vic? Yeah, definitely. I think playing goalkeeper last season, I was definitely exposed to that one-on-one -on -one versus really tall goal shooters. And it's, like Tanzan said, it's not just about the height, but your footwork, your movement, the jump, and also confusing the space. One key thing is not just to intercept the ball, but to make the Venus put in a bad pass. And that's the advantage, or the kind of the tactic that Torsten defenders need to try and take advantage of. Yeah, Vicky pretty much said it all, but the only thing I would add with being a shorter defender against someone tall, it's about that footwork to get around and make it look open. You want them to make it look like it's an easy pass in, because then it's not going to have the height, and without the height, it gives you more of an opportunity to get a hand in and tip it and chase onto it. How are you not dancing right now? I think everyone thinks I probably need the toilet, but it's, it's, just, the, it's just the music. Always, always. Right, before we let you go, loads of messages. Thank you to everyone that's got in touch so far. But there'll be those watching that want to take what they see out on court from you two into their next match, whatever level it might be at. What's your one key defensive tip? Work rate and communication with your unit. I think it's just staying with your player. Do your job first, and then everything else will open up for you. You're both heroes. Uh, feel free to dance off. <laughs> Is that a no? <laughs> yes. I mean, skills on the court and off it as well. Thank you to Zoe and to, to Vicky. That insight you can't pay for and you don't have to because you can watch it on YouTube, but having come fresh off the court to take it into that mind of what it's like being in that circle. Yeah, absolutely. I know you didn't ask me what my defensive Oh, go on then. Because no. I know it's this. I didn't, I didn't have one. Play it's with the back your tap. Side, That's isn't what it? I'm saying. Yeah, oh. something like that. No, I think it's so important, and the more interaction we're getting about the game, the way the game is growing, trying to go professional for next year, so important that we understand the tactical and technical elements as well and get a real insight into what the players are doing. We know so many people out there are playing our game, and I think this connection of that to that elite side is, is crucial. You are listening or watching Off the Court, the podcast available with Tamsin every week, post-match, and that insight as well, so do keep your questions coming. As coaches, have you changed the way that you've coached defensively over the years? Have you seen the shift? Yeah, absolutely. And um, on the pod, you'll hear from Fran Williams. And she talked about this international game shifting, that you're not winning as much ball. You know, in the Super League, we tend to watch unforced errors. And, and when you watch a real top level international, that, that could be like seven or eight to each side. It's nothing in each quarter. So that one valuable inset, that one fly, that one shot down on the centre pass, it's relentless. You have to keep going over and over it. And why players like Fran Williams, Vicky Osola have become so successful is because they can read the game so well. So on that one magical moment where you need the big win, that's what they're getting to. But it's certainly changed because attackers are getting quicker, faster, smarter, using the short pass. Defence about to up their game as well. And it is that very... Um, Tick for that, you know, one year a zone works, one year a one-on-one -on -one works, one year a player can do something the next they can't, so you're constantly evolving. Yeah, if you are watching then on YouTube, listen to the podcast for extra content like Fran Williams. Well, she left us for Sunsea and a bit of netball. We've got England at Rose's captain, uh, Fran Williams. Welcome, Fran. So how is it in Australia? You're at West Coast Fever. Is it awful? Yeah, it's really awful. It's just so hot and the beach, you know, the sand gets in your toes and the sea, there's so many waves and all the fish, they, you know, yeah, it's awful here, awful. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're selling it, not really. Um, Listen, you jumped on a plane after Nations Cup um, and you've got that signing down in the SSM, which is incredible. And we'll talk about that um, in a little bit. But are we ready to talk about that Nations Cup game yet or is that still off the table? Uh, I think we can talk about it. Yeah, I think you've got to be able to confront and own um, all the wins and all the losses. So, yeah, um, definitely willing to discuss that. 
<laughs> we won't go too much into it. But have you had any banter from any of the others or, or do they just ignore it? No, no, no. Me and Sunday straight away were on the banter with it. I think I came out with discussing it straight away just so that I could get it out there and air it on the table. And just like, oh, great to know it's not a sensitive topic. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just it's always interesting bantering with them about it because they have such confidence that, you know, we could have had a close game with them the week before and then comes to finals time. And, you know, they always know that they're going to have it in the bag. And that's something that we've got to look to change. Um not just in the way we play netball, but also in our mindset and the way we attack finals as an English team. But something that I definitely think that we've got in our capability of doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's been seen over the previous seasons. I mean, when I, I text you and said, Fran, please come on off the court. Our first one, um, looking ahead to the live games this weekend. And we we talked about, um, you know, are you enjoying it out there? And one of the texts, you came straight back to me and went, the standards, the intensity, like, you know, the setup, no wonder they're world number ones. And we've heard that so much. And, you know, it wouldn't have necessarily been a surprise to you, but it is almost a surprise when you get out there. Can you kind of expand on that a little bit? Like, how different is it? Yeah, I think that's, as you say, just the main thing that I've noticed already in the first three weeks of being here is that kind of professional setup that they have around their clubs and their training environments. And um, I think that just leads into both from staff and player perspective, the way that the intensity and standards are in training um, is something that I'm just not used to day in, day out. Um, and I think, and it's something I keep saying with the girls here, like the talent in England and our team is 100% there. Um, and it's just like, if we start getting those other things around our game, right, to harness that talent and get it world-class, like we will 100% be able to compete with the Diamonds and the teams over here. So I think it's a really exciting place to be because for me, I'm already learning so much in three weeks. And um, I hope that's something that when I come back into England, I'll be able to bring into the training environment. But um, yeah, from a skills drills perspective, the intensity of the training, the organisation and the professional setup. Uh, yeah, it's something I've definitely um, noticed as a massive difference and a step up, but I'm enjoying it. Well, you, you mentioned there as well, like when you come back into England camps and, you know, if, if you do ever return at some point, um, we might be talking to you in 10 years time with an Aussie twang. But, um, you know, that idea of of players going out there to play in SSN, it's it's nothing new. It's been happening since since the inception of, of the professional league out there. But this season's strange to me because there's actually only four English players in the SSN. Of course, we've got George over in New Zealand as well, but you're the only defender. And when I look through the stats, like you look back to 2018 when we won that Commonwealth Games gold, I think there was about nine players in that squad then that were out overseas. So I guess questions for me are, is it still the thing that English players want to do? Um, will it be harmful only having four for this season? And and being the only English defender out there, what kind of impact can that have for you both as a player and, of course, bring it back into the environment? Yeah, I mean, to put it bluntly, I guess, like firstly it's a professional league over here as you say and um for me the enjoyment of being able to be a full-time athlete and encompass everything that goes around not just playing netball and turning up to training but things the way like recovery is done all the work in the gym nutrition um you know the medical it's so on tap here and you're so well supported that being in that professional environment is something that just at the moment we just don't have at home and I'm you know the biggest advocate for making sure that our league gets to that place and I know how hard people are working to make that happen and that's a really exciting place to be but you know for me just being a part of that professional environment is only going to help to improve my game aside from all the netball stuff so I think that's one of the driving factors for wanting to come and play in this league um, and just the competitivity week in week out um, seeing all the other international players I can now call Janelle a teammate like one of the top international superstars of all time in our sport and I'm getting to go against her three times a week on court um, be around her all day like I'm learning stuff from an English perspective about playing against these Jamaicans but also getting to learn from them as well and um, that's yeah a really exciting place to be so for, for me personally it it was an exciting opportunity whether that's going to be for everyone I don't know it's a massive lifestyle change it's far away Australia I'm starting to realize that with time zones and things like that but um yeah it's not for everyone but it's just an opportunity that I'm really excited by and at my age I guess um my kind of thoughts were just why not 
Yeah, why not? No, I, I've been there and I, and I get it. And that whole idea of experiencing something completely different is um, you can't really beat it. And and obviously we're pushing hard for the professional league to launch next year. And I'll, again, I'll be intrigued at the numbers then whether we actually retain some of their big name players, you know, getting their sort of key stars over there. Um, you talked about some of the players you're getting to play against, you know, playing against Janiel Cornyn or a teammate now. Uh, down the defence end then, let's talk about Katie Ann Dehaney and Sunday Ariang. So you've got a defensive unit there of a, an English woman, a Jamaican and uh, an Australian. Um, yeah. Or as Dan, that... first, as Dan first pitched it to me, a gold medal, a silver medal and a bronze medal defensively oh. in the back end. <laughs> Do like that. That is that. Is yeah. Cool. I haven't really thought about that. How um how's that going then in terms of blending those styles styles together? Uh, you know what? I've been. I thought I'd find it tougher than it's been. Um, just because we're all three different styles of defence completely in our approach. Um, never played together. Also, all three of us are at a similar age um, in our career. So experience probably quite similar across the board. So it was going to be who's going to take a lead there. Um, so, yeah, I probably was a bit more concerned about it than I should have been because the connections have just come so quickly. And I think because all three of us are finding our feet, like we've got such equal voice in the back. Um, Sunday obviously knows the Fever way and Fever have their trademarks and their style of play. And, you know, it's exciting for me to come in and adopt something that's very much like there and get coached um, in kind of this is the style of play and try and fit my like flair I guess around that because I think that's an exciting thing to be a part of and we've got a lot of versatility there like I'm sliding back a bit Sunday can play wing defense um so yeah we're we're mixing and matching at the back and it's nice because I think there's already a lot of trust and um connection there because you know we're all seeing each other as very equal in that space yeah, it sounds um yeah, it's, it sounds like it could be a frightening end. I've spoken to Sarah Francis Bayman about it a couple of times, thinking, oh, how are you going to win ball with this lot? Because you could have so many different ways. And I kind of want to touch on that. Even hearing you talk about it now is very different to a Fran that I would have spoken to two years ago. And I'll take you back to some stats. 2022, you're playing for Loughborough Lightning. You make the grand final. You appeared in every game. You didn't make one top 10 stat for defenders in the league. You didn't make. I probably did for penalties though, or something. No, you like didn't. That. <laughs> you didn't. But, um, okay. I, that. I absolutely. Yeah. Did. Um, and you didn't make the Commonwealth Games squad, and you, you were, you know, obviously gutted about that. Uh, we've all been there. So, fast forward a year, 2023. You're the third best interceptor. You're the fourth best in games. You pretty much doubled your intercepts for that year. You made the final again with Loughborough Lightning and, and won the league. And I remember speaking to you at a game and you were like, I want to go to World Cup. And they've said, I'm not winning ball. I'm going to win ball. And I, ju I just want to talk a little bit about that journey. Like there must have been a massive impact at Loughborough in terms of how they were going to help you do that and create your style in your game. And and the growth in your game in that year was, was immense. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, to put it, I like reflect on things now a bit more harshly because I've had the positive experience and kind of come through the other side so I can say I got to a World Cup and things like that but I think yeah kind of before I was just one of those like steady players and I was just consistent and I did my job and I played a role in a defensive unit but I like I was never player of the match like if I got player of the match that was a rare thing I just wasn't one of those standout people that was a I guess a go-to ball winner in key moments maybe I was just constantly grinding my goal attack and and doing a good job and I still think I got reward for that and played my role but I think the switch of just then deciding actually with the way that netball was moving and I could see it internationally like it was so much harder and harder to win ball and people weren't giving up cheap ball and you know you couldn't just rely on getting a held ball or them throwing it off the back line like you actually had to come and win some ball yourself and I think the work that I did with Loughborough around my footwork the unit that they set up there and the trust in people doing their job to allow things to open up for us like myself and Alice to win ball at the back you know players like Nat, Nat Panagari, Jazzo, Beth Cobden this, in that year they're so structured in how they play that it allowed us to have some freedom and I think um then just getting some confidence in myself. I think almost the setback of not making a Commonwealth Games, there was nothing for me to lose then going into that final year. I was just going to have to play my heart, my soul, do all the extra work and training behind the scenes um, to get myself there. But I think it kind of took the pressure off and 
um I think that definitely like you could see the freedom I had then playing after that yeah I guess that summer no absolutely it was a standout season and well deserved and so much has sort of spiraled off the back of that as well just want to touch briefly and quickly my last question on physicality um so you say about the penalty list in 2022 you weren't in the top 10 but you doubled your incepts in 2023 and you hit the top 10 in penalties as well I think you were like third or fourth um is that joint is phys- does physicality come as part of winning ball is that just part of the process yeah and I think you know you don't want to you don't want to say that they're 100 percent correlated and linked but putting yourself in more positions where you're able to win the ball you'll naturally fall into more contests and the more times you're in a contest than not att- attackers just naturally do have an advantage in that space and I'm not saying that like umpire calls are wrong the attackers probably do have the advantage in that space <laughs> um because you know they're, they're making the moves they're leading their first ball placement allows for that to be the case um so yeah I guess putting by putting yourself in the contest and that opportunity to win more ball you're putting yourself in more 50 50 moments where often you might get get blown I guess um so I think it's just yeah it's just doing that to the extent where you're still putting yourself in that position where you're going to win enough ball or create enough doubt that actually they're not going to want to pass there the next time um and things like that rather than just constantly getting blown out of the game that then you've got no effect on on the pressure that that team's feeling and they've got to get out of jail free card by you being stood by that side the whole time yeah that never that never helps so it's it's been quite interesting and and I won't do it this time but it be nice to pick defenders' brains across. You talk about that labelling, like you weren't named as a star player, and then you've got, you know, Shamira Sterling, who's, you know, incepting Queen, and then you've got Jeeva, who's one of these most experienced, best footworks around, and Sarah Clow with the backing up, and then Courtney Bruce, who gets sort of named the villain. It's quite interesting to see how the, the defenders are labelled and targeted. Um, just your thoughts on kind of the player you want to be seen as? I just want to be seen as a, a pressure player, big game player um I definitely enjoy those moments I like lean into them rather than want to step away and and get scared I guess um and I think I want to be seen as smart and creative and I hope that that's how um people would view my play that I work well with others I think that's whenever coaches say what's your biggest strength I always say I'm good in a unit and I'm good sticking to structure like if you give me an instruction I'll go and do it um so being coachable and able to play instructors structures is massive for me. I think it just allows you to adapt to playing with different people as well. And I'm hoping that that's going to play into my hands with joining a new team and a new defensive unit this season. Yeah, same well. Well, listen, quick fire questions. Um, are you watching the NSL? Yes, I watched the season open. I loved it. Oh, can I test you on all five games then? <laughs> yeah, I didn't do the full marathon like you, but I was there. I was there supporting Loughborough. I watched a bit of, of the Bath Sirens game. I watched Thunder Pulse. Um, hope that would be closer than it was. Yeah, yeah, no, tell me about it. We've got lots to talk about on that. Uh, who are you keeping in touch with back home? Keeping in touch with Imo and Amy um, and Hannah Joseph at Loughborough. Liv Murphy and Vic supporting me as well. So yeah, that's nice. And what you um, what are you missing the most being out in Australia? Aside from my family, which I've just have to caveat, Obviously. um, good cup of tea. They've got amazing coffee here, but the cups of tea aren't the same. Get round to Sarah Bayman's house because um, they will bring her tea bags out when they come out. That's yeah, like, uh, York, Yorkshire tea, nothing. I hear. Yorkshire yeah. tea. All right, well, let, listen, quick one uh, to finish. So, you know, they do these like netball things, what your position means to you. So goal defences are loyal and reliable. They, uh, you can't ever insult her in a circle. I mean, I'm not sure they're talking about the shooting circle, but you can't insult your inner circle. Uh, you never back down from a debate, Fran Williams. Uh, you're ultra competitive and you love to tear it up on the dance floor. So can you tell me whether that is true or not? I'd say you couldn't get more accurate, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe the tear it up on the dance floor, but badly. Um, I'd definitely ultra competitive and that's not just in netball that would be anything and I guess that means that I'm definitely not shying away from any form of debate either no I've, I've had some of those debates with you friends so yeah I'm usually about <laughs> what I want you to do and I get that look but um listen it's been a- amazing to chat to you we are we well we can't wait to see how you perform this year out in the SSN I know there'll be eager English fans at home supporting you all the way we'd love to have you back on and hopefully you can drag Sarah at some point along as well and we'll get her to have a little bit of a chat but other than that enjoy the season good luck and please keep in touch will do thank you for having me thanks ram
great hearing from Fran and what a star she's going to be in Australia as well. So we're off and running in the Super League. That, that first round, I know that both Liana Liotta and Camilla Buchanan, who we've seen take or go head-to-head -head in, in round two, were saying that they were wanted to get that first one out of the way to measure where they are. Have you shifted your ideas of who's going to be wearing the come the end of the season? I think it's really early days, purely because we know a lot of teams are still building, whether they've got players to come back into the squad through injury or... Um, or whether it's been that time frame together as well. We've had a lot of internationals go on, a lot of players been here, there, everywhere on the world, so, world stage. So I think it's way too early to say. Coming off the back of last weekend, I thought Loughborough, I thought Thunder, I thought Stars looked structured. Mavericks, such an improved performance. And actually Rhinos too, they, they're in that game for a long period. So you are going to see a shift. The next few weeks will give, tell us all we need to know. And there's some really interesting games going on tonight as well that are going to give us a bit more insight. Well, they're asking us to slowly leave, uh, which is how I played my netball here in Hertfordshire. It's been another sellout to watch another classy game of netball Super League action. You can join us on Sky Sports for a rerun of the final Pulse against Lightning next Saturday, yes. if you're listening to this. It might be right before the match. Um, that one, how tingly will you be on a one to tingly factor scale? Yeah, I think that's a huge game, isn't it? I'm looking Look forward at you to... going serious and I'm trying to get you to tingle me out. I'm tingling. Okay, thanks. No, you can be serious. Go on. It'll be great. It's all tingling. <laughs> it's all tingling. Uh, we're going to dance backwards out of here in a slow fashion but that's only because it's instructed it's not because of our bad hits you've been watching off the court Tamsin's here every week you can have her in your ears you can watch her live after matches too do tune in do keep your comments coming as well because it's you ultimately that makes me go high pitch like that and with no voice at the end thank you for watching bye bye